hearing of the Senate Rural Regional Affairs and Transport Legislation Committee. The Senate has referred to the committee the particulars of proposed expenditure for 2016-17 and related documents for the agriculture and water resource portfolio. The committees may also examine the annual reports of the departments and agencies appearing before it. <coughs> the committee has before it a program listing agencies relating to matters for which senators have given notice and the proceedings today We'll begin with an examination of the Rural Industries Research and Development Corporation, the Cotton Research and Development, Grains Research and Development, Fisheries Research and Development, and the Australian Fisheries Management Authority. The Senate has ordered estimates committees to report to the Senate by Wednesday the 11th of May. So answers to questions on notice will be returned to the committee by 12 noon, Tuesday the 10th of May, best of luck. Um, Senators remind that there that any written questions on notice must be provided to the committee before Wednesday the 11th of May as tabling committee reports and reports ends the inquiry. Witnesses should note the answers cannot be received if the Senate has been dissolved for an election. Understanding Order 26, the committee must take all evidence in public session. I remind all witnesses that in giving evidence to the committee they are protected by parliamentary privilege. It's unlawful for anyone to threaten or disadvantage a witness on account of evidence given to a committee in such action may be treated by the Senate as contempt. It also may as a contempt to give false or misleading evidence to a committee. <coughs> the Senate by resolution in 1999 endorsed the following test of relevance of questions at estimates hearings. Any questions going to the operations or financial positions of the departments and agencies which are seeking funds in the estimates are relevant questions for the purpose of estimate hearings. I remind officers that the Senate has resolved there are no areas in which connection with the expenditure of public funds where any person has a discretion to withhold details or explanations from the Parliament or its committees unless the Parliament is explicitly provided otherwise. The Senate has resolved that an officer of the Department of the Commonwealth shall not be asked to give opinions on matters of policy, don't take the bait, and shall be given reasonable opportunity to refer questions asked of the officer to superior officers or to a minister. This resolution prohibits only questions asking for opinions on matters of policy, does not preclude questions asking for explanations of policies or factual questions about when and how policies were adopted. I particularly draw attention to the, uh, of witnesses to an order of the Senate of the 13th of May 2009, specifying the pro process by which a claim of public immunity should be raised. Witnesses are specifically reminded that a state statement in facing or a document is confidential or consists of advice to government is not a statement and meets the requirements of the 2009 order. Instead, witnesses are required to provide some specific indication of the harm to the public interest that could result from the disclosure of the information or the document. An officer called to answer a question for the first time state their, should state their full name and the capacity in which they appear, and witnesses should speak clearly into the microphones to assist hands hard to record proceedings and I could, could I especially remind myself and everybody else to t switch off their mobiles or tender them in Audible. And I now welcome, all the way from South Australia, the Honourable Anne Rushton, representing the Minister for Agriculture and Water Resources, Mr Young Darrell Finlevin, Secretary of the Department of Agriculture and Water Resources and his officers of the department. Minister Rushton and Mr Quinlevin, do you want to make an opening statement? Right. No, Chair. Okay. Well, we're into it. Thanks, Doug. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, <coughs> can I just get some clarity, uh, Chair, uh, in terms, we're going to have RIR, DC, grains and fisheries in this half hour session? Uh, yep. So Best they, of luck. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we've only got RIR, DC at the table. Can we have the others at the table? We can. Yep. Yeah, thanks. Um, ta. We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> Good afternoon. Yeah. So, Mr. Harvey, Professor Stelic, um, what's the current state of play with the relocation? Specifically, have any staff moved? Have any contracts been signed? Um, I can answer that, um, um, Senator. 
Um, before I do it, uh, would you, would the committee indulge me with a brief statement? Yeah, don't be frightened to speak up. Uh, this is my final appearance before the committee as the chair of the corporation. Um, Congratulations. So it's mine too. <laughs> you're, you're anticipating me, Senator. Um, I've had this privilege since April 2010, and in that time I chaired three boards. And I want to take this public opportunity of thanking them for successfully leading the corporation through a period of turbulence and change. I also want to thank our staff and our stakeholders for the, for the same reason. I'm very confident that the corporation is well placed to meet the opportunities that lie ahead. And the appointment of our new managing director, Mr John Harvey, is symbolic of this new beginning. And I just tell the committee that Mr Harvey's been in the job 48 hours. Beauty. I will get him. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to congratulate you, Chair, in your oh, eminent retirement. Be careful. And to personally thank you for your advocacy for rural Australia. Thanks. And in particular, your recognition of the often invisible but important contribution of rural women. To Australia. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. So to answer your question, Senator Cameron, um, we have uh, plans in place. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, I'm sure on behalf of the the, uh, the opposition, we would congratulate you for the work that you've done yeah. and wish you well uh, in the future. I'm sure that goes for everyone here. You speak Thank for you. us. Yeah. Yeah. Doug, yeah. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, to put, it, to put your question into context, uh, the board complied with the request from the minister to relocate Rodec outside of Canberra. It did so in its, at its meeting in uh, February of this year. And our plan is to start that process from the 1st of July. So at the moment, to answer your question specifically, uh, we are still located in Canberra. But next week, we have a board meeting in Wagga uh, with our new landlord, the Charles Sturt, University, Charles Sturt University, and we will be making plans from next week about the move. And the, so have you signed contracts with Charles Sturt? Um, I will ask. Uh, not at this point in time. We have a located a uh, premise and we are in negotiations with the university. Uh, so, so there's no contract signed, there's no staff moved? Correct. That, that's Correct. the situation. Um, we're in caretaker, we'll be in caretaker mode next week. What's your plans for consulting with the opposition on this issue? Um, we would be discussing that at the board meeting next week, Senator. Can I just make it clear that um, our contract on the lease premises we hold in Canberra expires at the end of September? Yeah. yeah. What, what's the outstanding cost of that lease? Um, you can take that on notice. Yeah, yeah, we can take that on notice, yeah. yeah. Uh, is there, have you negotiated with staff for the, the, the move? We've had extensive discussions with staff. I remind the committee that our first uh, board discussion about this issue was two years ago. Yeah. And I personally have made sure that every after every board meeting we keep the staff informed. Okay. And the staff have had one-on-one -on -one meetings with management throughout yeah. this time. Yep. So nothing's changed at this stage. You're in the process of working through uh, a, a possible move, but you haven't moved yet. Would that be a fair assessment? Well, it is the reality. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, who else do we have? Uh, what about uh, Green's research? That end. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Thomas. I'll just introduce myself. Uh, I'm Steve Thomas. I'm the Acting Managing Director of Grains Research and Development Corporation yeah. until the 4th of July, yeah. which is when Dr. Jeffries will take over officially as the Managing Director. Yeah. Uh, just before I come to you, Mr. Thomas, uh, Ms. Delic, where, where is your planned move, just to refresh everyone's memory? Where? Yeah. To Wagga Wagga. To Senator. Wagga? Yep. So, so you're off to, to the... Wagga. Yep. Uh, Mr Thomas, what's the situation with you guys? Where are you supposed to be moving to? Uh, we've implemented a hub and spoke model, Senator. Uh, that's been in plan now for some time. We yeah. have a central hub in Canberra, uh, which is looking after our longer term investments uh, and those that are best coordinated mm -hmm. nationally. We also have offices that have been opened in Adelaide together with uh, FRDC and Australian Wine. We have another office which was opened recently in Dubbo. Yep. 
we will offer, open a further office in Toowoomba, and we've had an office in Perth for some time. Okay, so can you, uh, what's been the cost of this re reallocate, reallocation yes. of resources? So the total cost of offices uh, is a $128,945. $128,000. Is there, what about your current leases in Canberra? Our current lease in Canberra is a 10-year lease. It's in the order of $10 million. So you'll have spare office space in Canberra, will you? At the moment, uh, I have a range of contractors in my office uh, that are undertaking a core system replacement. I uh, suspect that when they have left, uh, we will be looking at opportunities to, uh, to partner with like organisations to offer them some space. Now, what I'm asking you, you've got spare office space in Canberra as a result of this decision. Yes or no? I, I have office space in Canberra, but whether it's spare is debatable, Senator. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the more pertinent question is, do you have the capacity to sublet it? I would have the capacity to sublet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Having the capacity to sublet is not the same as being able to sublet, are, is it? We are actively looking at opportunities to yeah. sublet. So you've got no, you've got no, you've got no leases. For I have the... no leases at the moment. We have been undertaking okay. negotiations. And if Can I you just ask how many people you've got in that million dollar a year rent? How many people occupy a million dollar rental property? At the moment, within Canberra, I have in the order of 50 staff. 50 staff and, and I have, a million a year. I have a further 10 to 15 contractors at any one time. So 65 staff and a million bucks a year rent. That is what we have can, at the moment. Can you, uh, can you just tell me how much a square metre it is? Well, it's like a good job to me. I'll be off your land. Sure. Sounds like we're on the job here, so. So, so I missed Mr. Chair. 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 What did you ask? I missed that. Hey? What did you ask? I asked him how much a square metre. Okay, that's an even better question. Uh, I might actually refer to my head of corporate services. Is that if that's okay, Senator? All right. I mean, you can waffle around, but that's yeah, that's fine. That's the right. spear in the heart. <coughs> Bear in mind, it costs twenty-five thousand dollars a square metre to refurbish the government offices in Sydney a couple of years ago. Twenty-five thousand dollars a square metre to refurbish them was bloody bullshit. So while we're waiting for that, that, that sure. response, so you've signed contracts for lease space in these other spoke, if you, the spoke areas, yes, have you? Yes, we have. Okay, you've signed those contracts. Have staff moved? Yes, they have, sir. Okay, so you're down the track a bit. Can I, and while we're waiting for the... <coughs> do we have that figure or not? Yes, Senator. Tanya Howard, Executive Manager, Corporate Services. So the cost per square metre of our current building is $475 per square metre. Okay. Per month? No, per annum. Per, per annum. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, fisheries? Who, who, who owns here? the building? Uh, ISPT. Who? ISPT. Who the bloody hell are they? Um, they're super a superannuation, superannuation fund, I believe. Manage oh, a lot of I? superannuation Who's funds. Who's super? Industry. It's the independent. Uh, yeah, independent. Okay. Um, 473. Okay, Fisheries Research and Development. Uh, Dr. Hohn, uh, have you uh, moved? Have you signed any contracts? So, Senator Cameron, uh, the situation is the same as the last Senate. So, we have established the Adelaide office. We have appointed the six people in Adelaide. Um, we've inducted the six people in Adelaide, and in Canberra, we continue to have an office in Canberra. Okay. So, have you contract signed? The contract is signed with the lease in Adelaide, yes, yeah. and the launch of the Adelaide office has occurred, yes. Okay, so that's, that's all underway. Um, now, can I just go back a minute? Sure. Doug? So the person that owns the building, is that an independent or an industry super fund? Uh, I'm not sure of the Can details. you find that out? Sure. It's a, it's a property trust that super funds invest in. All the super funds put it in the industry. Industry super fund? Yeah, all of them. It's all a property trust that markets to all super yeah, funds. Yeah, yeah. Mm. They're cute, some of these things. OK, um, greens. That's about seven percent. Can I? 
You uh, used Alan Jones uh, apparently to raise awareness of the value of the grain sector. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Um, so how much did you pay Alan Jones to do this? I might call my executive manager of communication, Senator. Uh, good morning, Senator Kate Lord, Executive Manager of Communications. Working here. That's good. That's good. Is that fine? That's good. Yeah. Um, so, with regards to the costs, specifically for the events, the costs were around seventy thousand uh, dollars. There was a slight reduction uh, from the quan that we submitted in the last estimates from eighty to seventy. We made some cost efficiencies there. Uh, the entire piece of work, though, so the nine hundred and fifty uh, radio slots, the four events the four podcasts, the video, um, and access to the 9.9 .9 million listeners comes in at $178,846. Okay. Um, now, was Alan Jones paid $60,000 for three events? So the $60,000 that went to uh, Fairfax Regional Radio, that money covered travel costs, accommodation, food and beverage costs. Um, obviously, when uh, Alan was doing the events, he set up a regional radio station, so we also paid Very some cosy with Mr. Mr. Jones, aren't you know, Alan? Mm -hmm. Well, we did a significant amount of research to find out who would be the best person to speak to our audience. And Mr. Mr. Jones's research, uh, Mr. Jones's team has told me that over the period we used him, the seven weeks, he was able to reach 9.9 .9 million Australians. So okay, we felt that someone with that sort of reach would be an appropriate person uh, to speak the message of Australian uh, grains. Okay. Now you also used a, a Western Australian radio presenter, uh, Mr. Bartlett, was it? Correct, uh, Liam Bartlett. He is a, yeah. a, a television uh, host for Channel 9 News and also a radio uh, presenter. And he was paid $20,000 for one event? Uh, so again, the costs were for travel, for accommodation, food and beverage, uh, incidental costs. I have a breakdown um, of those costs, which I've been oh, well, able to can, provide. Yeah, so can you just... provide the breakdown of costs for uh, Mr. Jones? So, and the sorry, breakdown of costs just, for Mr. Bartlett? A point of clarification. You, you keep framing it as Mr. Jones and Mr. Bartlett or whatever. Did you pay this to these people personally or, or did you pay it to their employers as, uh, prop, as appropriate media outlets like Fairfax Rural Media or can you just give me some understanding because it's being framed in a way in which, you know, it sounds like there's all these greedy yeah. media people out there getting all this money from the government. I never say greedy, but they're well paid by the looks of it. Well, well <laughs> you, can, you have the same opportunity in this great country of ours to achieve the same level of income if you choose to go down that path. Well, I think with regard to Rick, what I've already shared, that's what Senator Cameron was leading down that Cameron. path and the information was so forthcoming. Thank you very much. Just right. to go to cut out the crap. So was the, was the check paid to the corporate entity or to the person? Uh, to, to Fairfax Regional. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, but excuse me, hang on, Chair. Senator Cameron is asking, That's and right. the official is doing the right That's thing, right. and the official, I'm sorry, I can't see your name, I haven't got my glasses on. Uh, Ms. Ms. Lord. Ms. Lord, thank you. And Ms. Lord was just going to break it all down for the committee. Yeah. So right. we don't need to run up uh, obstructions. No, 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 but I mean, the check is not made out to a person, it's made out yeah, to the court. No, no, but, but Senator Cameron is asking the questions. We'll you find out exactly. Fairfax, what they No, no, we, no well, we're, we're going to well, find the, out. The, the reality is, Miss Lord, isn't it, that the, the payment was for the services uh, of, Ms. a part of the payment, at least, was for the services of Mr. Bartlett and Mr. Jones. That's correct, isn't it? So the way that we structured this particular approach was to have research done first to inform us as to who would be the best person to facilitate these events um, and the names that were put forward to us by Fairfax were uh, Mr how much Jones did, How Mr. much did you pay for the research? You would have. Uh, the, the audience research was completed by a separate company 
Uh, the research that we've done on audience segmentation, so that research took probably three or four months to complete. That's, uh, I think, the cost of coming just under $100,000, but that was not just specific to this particular program. So you spent $100,000 to tell you that Alan, that Alan Jones and Mr. Bartlett would be the best people to do this job, is that correct? No, that's not correct, Senator. Well, what what, did, what, what was I, the 100000 for? Sorry, Senator. What I have done is undertaken audience research. So actually, for me as a communications professional, when putting together my plans for the year, I can understand where my stakeholders are engaging with media. So what we found when looking at uh, grower stakeholders in particular, they're huge consumers of radio, which makes uh, sense. When On the bloody use, tractor, there's nothing else to do. Quite <coughs> and, uh, very high consumers of talkback radio, obviously. Um, and that would, would be evidenced by the 9.9 .9 million uh, stakeholders that potentially Alan Jones could reach in a seven week period. I'm sure a lot of those 9.9 .9 million would have absolutely no concern about your organisation at all, wouldn't they? They well, wouldn't care. I, couldn't, I, I possibly couldn't speculate, but, but if they haven't heard our message, I'm not sure how yeah. else they would learn to care about the grain. So industry. if they heard your message, what, what does that mean for, for agricultural production and research? So I'll give you, give you a very clear example. So of that audience, we've seen that 5,100 of our case studies, so our extension case studies, the most popular of which was called uh, No-Till Pays Bills. So it's a very specific uh, agricultural reference. 5,100 people have read our case studies about yeah. how to improve productivity on farm. Doug, do you know what No-Till Pays Bills mean? I do. Chair. With the greatest respect, we don't have much time. So can we at least behave in uh, no, no, five that hours is, that we have? To understand can what you no give Senator Cameron zero the tillage, the, question. the message to farmers and the, out there, if you want to keep the price of wheat down, you've got to keep your costs down. Zero tillage. I mean, once upon a time, you fallowed the paddock in the spring and you sprayed it for bloody... Yeah. It's all very it's important. important. It's and it's now, very important. it's zero tillage. And it's a great way to keep your costs chair, down because the this bloody is very wheat market's important, up the chair, shit. But we have limited time, yeah, yeah, well, and you'll get another letter if you're not if careful. You in fact, I encourage you to write another letter. Who from? Oh, whoever it was that wrote it before. But can oh, no, we no, at no. least can we oh, at least no, have the opportunity yeah, to let Senator right. Cameron follow the line of questioning right. in the limited time that we have? Yeah, but I think I think that is to graphic zero tillage is a good message. So when is it all finished? I can. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah, thanks. Um, so, um, who decided that Mr. Jones and Mr. Bartlett were of equal value? In what regards? In terms of Mr. Jones gets paid uh, for three events, 60,000. Mr. Bartlett received 20. I'd have for to one say, event. Yeah, I'd have to take it on notice and actually give you a breakdown of all the costs. But I, I thought you had that, Miss Lord. You were I'd, going to give us a breakdown. I've actually just done for one event. We're actually still in the middle of um, of this piece of work, so it's um, I, obviously I, the events. Have sorry, Miss Lord, I can't believe that someone here hasn't got the figures, knowing darn well that it's Senate estimates. I cannot believe you don't have the figures. You were about to give us a breakdown. You said now, said one event. I've just done. You would this. have you would have the costings there. The first events, but actually we made some savings in the first uh, event. So Same thing, Green. I Doug, I won't take any more of your time, mate, but I'm getting frustrated. Mm. So I'd be happy to take it on notice and provide no, it. No, no, you'd have it here. But you, you, are, the, you are the, I think you, you, you called yourself a communications professional. You're the I like one, to think you, so. you're the person that uh, negotiated all this, aren't you? I did, yes, yeah, and so, I managed so you can't to save tell the organisation in order of $92,000 through my negotiations on this particular package. So when I was looking no, no, at No, no, just stop talking for a minute. Um, I'm asking, asking a question. A question. Uh, so you're, you're the professional, you negotiated the package, but you can't tell us uh, why the Alan Jones was valued the same as Mr. Bat. <coughs> You can't, you can't tell me that now. We're getting to the big uh, issues. Senator, I, I think we'd already established that the payment was made to Fairfax Media. That's not um, what you said. I the main questions on notice. I don't know that we would actually presume to understand how Fairfax might construct its account. Um, if you would like us to take that on notice, we're more than happy to do so. Um, free beer. There was a, a talent fee. Was that who was the talent fee paid to? Correct. So that's what Fairfax calls um, the, just the way that it actually 
uh, bills us. It's called a talent fee, and that covers travel costs, accommodation, food and beverage, the ISDN line for the show, and yeah. incidental costs. All right, so we provide a breakdown on... Do you have the breakdown on that with you? I have the one event. I have the breakdown. OK, on. can you provide that and <coughs> table that now? Yes, I can. OK, that's good. If you table that, that would be good. Um, we might have to come back to that uh, while it's being uh, found. Um, now, how many people attended the events? Uh, so we had in the order of 262 stakeholders, not including staff um, and support uh, people. Consequently, yeah. we also produced four podcasts from the event, and those have been downloaded and listened to 1,300 times so far. So approximately 1,500 people at this point. But as I said, we're only at the very that, early stages. But stage that downloading the isn't what I've asked you. I've asked how many people attended the events. That's 262. 262. Okay. How many of them were actually growers? So 262 is the number, which is not staff and support. But how many were growers? Um, I would have to take that on notice and get a breakdown. So I've actually got a list of the 262, yeah. but some of them wear dual hats. Obviously, some of them are growers, some of them are researchers, some are industry, some are representatives. So there is a <coughs> quite a mix. So do you have that with you? I don't know. I'd have to take Has someone else got it? Someone else behind you? I can't believe this, you come and send this, but you can't even provide basic information such as this. Well, the names of 262... We don't want the names. Send the camera to ask for the names. You surely can't have us believe that you couldn't tell us how many were growers. Well, when they attended the events, we asked them to register their details if they wanted to. They were free in public events, so I could speculate or give you an estimate. This is levy payers' money, Miss Lord. I would have thought the GRDC would know exactly who the audience is. This is levy payers money. It Sorry, send the camera. Okay, um, so I think that there's been some discussions about the consistency of this expenditure with the Act. Have you uh, had any legal advice on this, Mr. Thomas? Uh, Senator, we didn't seek legal advice on this. Uh, when we looked at, at this, quite clearly it fits within uh, sections 11E and 11A of the Perth Section 11E and 11A. So what's 11E? Just tell me what 11E says. Uh, 11E is the dissemination of results what and communication of research and development. Big do you have the Act there? Uh, I do have I do have. Well, just read 11E act. to me, will you? 11E states... To disseminate, commercialise and facilitate the dissemination, adoption and commercialisation of the results of research and development in relation to the primary industry or class of primary industries in respect of which the corporation was established. Okay, so disseminating that to um, a pensioner in grey stains, how does that meet this... Uh, I would refer you also to the functions of... Uh, no, I'm asking, does that, does, does that fit with 11E? Uh, the audience, uh, Senator, was very, very broad. But I'm asking you, so, you're spending money to, to, get to, to reach a pensioner in grey stains in the western suburbs of Sydney who's probably never been on a farm. Uh, how does that promote your organisation? Senator, we've spent money to promote the grains industry across a very wide audience. So, so are you saying you get value from that pensioner in grey stains uh, who's listening to Alan Jones? <coughs> that you, what's the value you get from I, her? What I'm saying, Senator, is the, the investment was made to increase the awareness of the grains industry across a very wide audience. Uh, so, so, so you're happy that you're spending money to tell a pensioner in, in grey stains in Western Sydney about your research? Our, that... re our research and the target of, those, uh, of this actual campaign was to go across a very, very wide audience. Now, Including that pensioners been... in grey stains? It is, it is whether we were looking uh, for our interaction across the grains industry and those that are interested in the grains industry. Right. Well, it just sounds a bit dumb to me. 11A, read the 11A, will you? 11A refers to the investigate and evaluate the requirements of research and development in relation to a primary industry or a class of primary industries in respect of which it was established and on the basis of such investigations and evaluation to prepare an R&D plan and to review and revise that plan. So. This doesn't do anything about dissemination, adoption and commercialisation, does it? Uh, I mean, that, that, if you're going to disseminate 
and, and get more adoption and commercialisation of your research and development. Telling the pensioner in Greystains doesn't do anything, does it? Are we referring to Part A or Part E? No, I'm just it? asking you in general terms. May I answer that question, <coughs> Senator? Um, I just alluded before to the case studies that we've put together on key research outcomes. I think the fact that 5,100 people over a seven week period have already engaged with the, the top two, in fact, the first one was the no-till pays bills and the second one was focus on the grains industry sustainability. And both of these case studies are trying to give growers insights and raise awareness of things that they can do to increase their mm. profitability and that's core to GRDC's business. Now we're, we're always looking for innovative and different ways to get our message across and we really felt someone it's who innovative. had a reach at this level with this, this type of um, uh, interest in the agriculture sector would be a good way to do that. I think if it would be too early to give you final results, uh, we're still in the process of doing this. We, we are promoting this through our online channels, through Facebook, through our own accounts. So it would be too early to um, give you a full uh, evaluation. But the early signs tell us 5,100 people viewing a case study is a very significant number in our, in our industry. So you've got, you've got ads. So can you provide then the, all of your uh, internal uh, documentation in relation to the development of this this uh, program. I'd be happy to. All memos, uh, all file notes uh, in relation to it. Yep. Absolutely. Um, the radio ads. Are you claiming they're consistent with the act? So the radio, the radio spots that you are talking about through <coughs> Alan's network, the 950 slots of which I will note that we were able to negotiate 674 of those for free. Um, those slots were actually to raise money. I'm only interested, I'm not interested in what you get for free, I'm interested in what you paid for. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. So how much did you pay for the ads? The entire total of the package is 178,846, right. the first figure I gave. Okay, so, uh, so these were marketing. This was a marketing program, wasn't it? I think when you're, it, Mm -hmm. Marketing is an interesting term in the agriculture space and I am aware of the difference between marketing in a communications context and marketing and developing market access. This particular program was about raising awareness. Um, the particular slots were actually indicating to people in the general public that they could attend the events, that they could come free of charge. So the Greystains granny can come along? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is too, I mean obviously we, we point them <coughs> towards our website. We are trying to increase our web traffic which is, uh, and research has told us, that is still quite low. But websites are the most important uh, place for information were for the, grain growers. Were the, were the radio ads running in, in Canberra? Uh, they were running across 56 regional hubs. I'll have to check if they were running in Canberra. I'll take so it you don't know whether they were running in the nation's capital? They were syndicated, so we had a lot of free and extra slots appointed to us. All of the ones we paid for were across the Did you target Canberra? Stations. Did you ask specifically for Canberra to be included? Uh, we wouldn't consider Canberra to necessarily be a key grain growing region. Uh, we, well, but, but Grey Stains is not a grey, grain growing region either, is it? So grey stains in the western suburbs of Sydney is not a grain growing area? No, but there potentially are young people who sit in those particular electorates whose parents may listen to this and say to them, you know what you should think about? A career in grains. And that is one of the other objectives we've talked about. I mean, obviously there is the extension component right. of can you provide? Can you then provide the, uh, the actual uh, transcript of the ads that went out? I would be happy to take that on notice. Yep, provide them. And what were they saying? But what, what were they saying in these ads? That you'd come and get a job in the grains industry? Well, we weren't quite that forward, although at some point in the future we may be. Actually, what we're no, saying, saying is... You're saying it would entice a young person to work in the grain industry. How, tell me what the ad said that would do that. Actually, what I said, just point of clarification, is that perhaps uh, one of the listeners, we know what the demographic is of Alan Jones' show, might say to a young person, that actually this is a good career for you and agriculture is a, a valuable career. One of the problems that agriculture has is a lot of people give it a bad reputation. Uh, a lot of the image of agriculture is actually of um, centres around drought, we've got no water, we haven't had, we've got all these problems, you can't make a living. And one of the functions of the events was actually to try and elevate the image of agriculture. And 
you know, I found, I'd give the example of Gundawindi. I had three generations of growers standing there and the oldest grower saying to the youngest grower, well, I didn't know that this was this exciting. Now, I'm not saying that in every case, someone's gonna pick up my work and tell somebody to go, but it is, it is a possibility and it certainly was one of the objectives. So, okay, so if you could then specifically indicate to, to me by you know, a separate uh, question on notice, how these ads specifically um, and, uh, gave an enticement basically to young people in the western suburbs of Sydney to get a job in the grain industry. Okay? That's what you said that they would do. I'd Thank like you, to Senator. know exactly where, where that comes. Uh, um, Senator Cameron, could I um, just seek some <coughs> guidance of what's in the back of your mighty brain in terms of we're still on the first issue, we've got 50 issue, different sections. Um, when do you think you'll be finished here? I'm having to spend all day uh, on I've this got if you a few, want. A few more, well look, hopefully in the next 10 because minutes. Because you're doing a bit of circle work now. Hmm? You're doing a bit of circle work. Uh, well, but the reason okay. it circles because you don't understand the industry. Well, the with well the you know. Respect, with yeah. the grocery yeah. respect. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe you might want to get out and get another sandwich. Yeah. We're having a decent conversation here. I'll tell you what I do understand. I do I'm, understand I'm when, when grain speak. growers are getting ripped off. I do understand that. Oh. I do understand it's that. They're protesting in so, the streets, um, aren't they? They don't know the facts, Sean. That's the problem. Well, this Where advertisement so would presumably then uh, so, be leading no, them in that direction. So they would be a bit of order. Senator Back, do you want the call? No, no hang on, that so, chair. With great respect, the Senator Cameron had the call. You That's interrupted. Right. I have the capacity you interrupted to call. Him. You inter I have well, mate, I'm happy to pull a vote on if you want to. Put You're right. That, if you want to put that to the committee while people are out there watching mm. and and right. absolutely engaging in the uh, questions from Senator Cameron mm. and the answers mm. from the department. You're the one that's yeah, running good. the appearance. Yeah, good, good, good. So, how many GRDC board members and staff attended each roadshow? Um, so, we had a board director speak on each of the panels. Um, except for the orange panel, which we tied into a board, uh, an actual board meeting, because we were doing a regional board meeting in Dubbo and Orange, so the entire board attended that event. The entire board? How many are on, on the board? Eight board directors. <coughs> okay. Uh, how many staff? You didn't tell me how many staff. Uh, myself. Uh, I was at every event. Um, and at two events, I had one other communications person. Okay, so can you provide details of the costs uh, for staff and board members to stay at these uh, functions? Can you provide itemised accounts for accommodation, for uh, food, uh, and uh, any other costs associated with the board members and the staff members attending uh, these road shows? Um, was all flights and accommodation paid for for the Perth uh, seminar? Uh, so the board director who spoke uh, at Geraldton uh, is our West Australian board director, our deputy chair. Okay. But there was still a cost, was there, from Gerald? Uh, yeah, yes, there was a cost. So can you provide, um, you'll provide that in that general. So all the costs to. associated with uh, staff, board and staff members attending. Um, have you paid, has, have you ever paid any money to the, uh, for a Liberal Party fundraiser? <laughs> in the, in the history, not, you not to my knowledge. I'm talking about the TWU here. <laughs> That's no. right. It's, has it, have, have any of the well, staff, have, any, have you or any of the staff ever sure. attended a Liberal well, Party well, fundraiser? I've never attended a Liberal Party fundraiser, Senator. Liberal Party function? No, Senator. Anyone? Oh, come on. I have. Anyone? You know, put it on record if I can. I have. I've attended I'd like to put it on record, I'd rather drink battery acid. Well, there you go. <laughs> we can fix well, that not. too. Very good. Can I, uh, can I ask a okay, question, just, Mr. Uh, Thomas? On Thank you. Uh, you're the acting managing director. In terms of your capacity and research, do you have a live option to follow Wedgetail? Beg your pardon? Do you have a live option to follow Wedgetail? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Senator. You know what Wedgetail is? I know Wedgetail. I know the yeah. variety very well. Yeah, and you know it's it's a long season wheat. Are you, yes. are you folks, are you promoting 
the next generation of wedge tail? So the actual uh, the actual wheat breeding uh, environment in Australia, Senate, as you as you'd be aware, has never asked a question unless you know the answer. By the way, yep, that, and that's fine. Um, so there are options for long season wheats, and in particular, um, from where you're from, Senator, uh, long season wheats that are suitable for grazing. Mm. So as part of your blurb, do you, I mean, and obviously the new generation of young farmers, and we talked about getting young farmers, you can't get tractor drivers now. A lot of these guys are going to use backpackers, and we'll come to 417s later, but... You certainly will. Um, <laughs> A big time. Um, uh, we obviously um, try and encourage stock as dual enterprise instead of a single enterprise risk on a farm. Yep. And you know, I, I can give you one name, the families won't embarrass them, but out of Walgett, which is beautiful black country, and every third or fourth year you'll get a bum bust of a crop and then you'll miss a couple and etc. But the young blacks like to take all the fences out and just have the tractor on auto and up and back, up and back, up and back. But, but a wheat like Wedgetail enables a dual enterprise so you can put your stock on through the winter, take them off as I do at the end of August and still get a crop equivalent as, as if you haven't had the stock on the crop. So is that sort of stuff, do you promote that? Oh, ab absolutely, Senator. Um, we have, a, we have a, a number of large programs within the farming systems portfolio which are very much around risk and, and running stock as well as uh, serial so enterprises very much point. about managing risk. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Doug. Okay, thanks. Um, so, so none of you have uh, attended a Liberal Party fundraiser. Um, who's your chair? Uh, my chair is Richard Clark. Yeah. Um, have you ever paid for his attendance at a Liberal Party fundraiser? I'd have to take that on notice, Senator. Mm -hmm. So you're not sure? Oh. Uh, not to my knowledge. Are you aware of Mr Clark attending a Liberal Party fundraiser? No, I'm not. And what would it matter a rat's ass if he did? I mean, the guy's from the bush. And, um, and so <coughs> what? And, uh, have you ever attended a fundraiser? Of course you have. And as a union party, of course they have. What are you going on about? What's wrong finished? with going to a bloody fundraiser, whether it's finished? a communist or a whatever? Well, well, we know what happens to the Liberal Party funds. They end up in brown paper bags. Oh, get, get, oh, no, no, get, get them. What about the B-doubles, Doug? Yeah. Yeah. What about the big yeah. B-doubles of T-doubles? Well, well, let me just yeah. put to you, mate. If you, go, if you go to the B-doubles, the carpet man... You want to walk outside? Man. You want to take 10 steps outside and say oh, that, Chris? Why would I want to take 10 steps outside? You want to put that outside? I say this to Doug across the chamber all the time, Glenn. You know that. I say that to Doug across this table all the time. Walk outside. Mate, here we go. Oh, Into it. Doug Don't and I, right out. That, Doug that's enough. And that's Doug enough. and I have this conversation across the chamber. Don't point at me. Don't point at me. Don't take the bait. Settle. Settle. Now that's just that. That was the. Ladies and gentlemen, that was. That that was that. That's the ad break. Now we'll go Friends back to the program. The no. the Doug and I have, do we not? No, it doesn't matter. I'm not no. engaging in this, I can tell you that. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so you're only 15 minutes behind. Yeah. Let's well, that's okay. Well, I'm happy to talk about um, this. So you'll... Uh, actually hear the so, well, yeah. Mr Clark's not here, is he? No, Mr Clark's okay. not here. Okay. So you'll, t so you'll raise with him uh, and you'll have a look to see whether you've paid well, any, uh, any money for I'll be interested the Liberal in the Party fund. I'll framing reason. the question. Your organisation has never paid for uh, anybody's attendance at any political party fundraiser. How about that? How about we do that? That's, that's fine. I've that's met farmers that have Labor voters. There are not many. I mean, I mean, if, if okay. Um, can I just can I just move on? No, um, well, we're wondering. Well, I just Doug, we question. are on limited time. Mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get through it. Yeah, no, but I'm I mean, sitting here patiently. Yeah, well, I, I, well, using. Well, I haven't said anything. I'm going to give you a rest there. now. If, if uh, can I just finish this? Have you got I've a question? Got, no, I'm missing. I've got. Right. I've got. I've got one. Okay. okay. Have a rest. Uh, Doctor Ho. I had a long rest when you were all arguing. Well, you're pure of the driven snow. We know that. Uh, an, an issue which is uh, affecting us currently uh, uh, in the seafood, or more particularly the Australian oyster industry at the moment. Uh, can you uh, just 
give me an update or outline what your involvement is with the oyster industry currently uh, and the reaction to the outbreak of the POMS virus, the Pacific Oyster Mortality Syndrome, uh, and that which has occurred in Tasmania. There's yeah. a big issue for them down there. Yeah, thanks, uh, So it, it's not a good story. Um, we've obviously had a large outbreak in Tasmania. Uh, affected uh, a significant proportion of the Tasmanian production area, but more importantly also a significant part of the hatchery system. Probably 90% of the Pacific oyster hatchery production has been affected by this. Wow. So as a consequence, it also affects South Australia and New South Wales. Um, and all farmers need seed, and obviously we've now got a big shortage of seed production. Uh, as a result, um, the Fisheries R&D Corporation has put a lot of work into making sure that we've got some emergency research happening, particularly around trying to uh, understand what the nature of happened on farm, so we can actually inform those farmers in infected areas how best to respond. And many of them are actually already doing some really positive things. We're seeing um, quite a change in behaviour of how they're going to farm oysters, what we call window farming, where they can farm between the slot between the virus occurring and not occurring. And so that's happening. Uh, we're seeing uh, quite uh, innovative ways in how people are running biosecurity measures, which uh, to the credit of the industry, the government, the federal government, uh, has meant that we've actually not seen the virus now spread beyond any other areas. And that's particularly important to South Australia. I think um, the government's, the response, the Department of Agricultural Resources, all the work that's been done on the diagnostics has been excellent. Um, uh, they've just undertaken to develop a national response plan and that's identified some critical areas where we need to focus and particularly around getting selective bred oysters for Pacific oysters. Now we've already got a lot of research and train and part of the work is to actually try and fast track that work. And so that is now also happening as well. And there's quite a lot of work being uh, put into communication strategies. Like a lot of things, there's uh, a lot of experience around the world, both in France, New Zealand, and also in New South Wales, where we've already previously had this virus. And getting that information onto farms so that the farmers actually understand how best to farm in the presence. And even those farmers who don't have the virus, making sure that they understand the consequences of how they have to maintain their farms and be better aware about reporting uh, mortality on farm. And we've actually, it's been very pleasing to see how much increase in spike of uh, reporting of incidences is happening, which is always a good thing, so that's raised a lot of awareness. Um, where does this leave us? At the moment we've got a lot of farmers in Tasmania who, thanks to obviously the Department of Agriculture's investment in biosecurity and the Tasmanian government, um, are now responding. But we've, it's probably going to take us two, three years before we know the full extent. Mm. Oh, well, I wish you luck with that for the sake of those growers and, and uh, containing it and uh, ensuring that it stays where it is and we get rid of it where it is. Yeah. I th think, Senator, the, the importance of um, a strong biosecurity in aquatics is really critical to us. Um, we're seeing... Um, the discussion you know, about things like the carp virus at the moment and things and exotic pests. The marine environment, the aquatic environment, uh, continues to have uh, incidences of either pest incursions or disease outbreaks and building better systems around biosecurity and, and awareness around farmers is absolutely critical to that. Mm. Okay, so we're on the job. Uh, I think... Senator Seward so, wanted some time too. Not, yeah. not in this area. Oh, right. okay. so so just, oh, just to inform the committee, uh, Doug has got a couple of more questions on research, on the research portfolios, and as I understand it, Senator Cameron, you want to move on from this? <coughs> yes. Yeah. Does yeah. anyone else have questions on the research portfolios? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Senator Gallagher. No, I'm after you. Oh, no. Okay, um, so. What advice have you had, Mr. Thomas, uh, in relation to the possibility of leasing the vacant uh, office space as a result of this uh, move? Mm. Uh, I'll, ask my, I'll ask my head of uh, corporate services to join me. Uh, my understanding is that we have looked uh, at a sublease arrangement uh, for a, on a number of uh, with a number of parties, 
those uh, negotiations have been ongoing. Uh, and as yet, we have uh, not managed to conclude the deal. So when did you start these negotiations? Uh, I might hand to uh, Ms Howe. Um, we've been in discussions with a few different agencies for probably the last um, about six months. Six months? Yeah. You, you may and have you, to just you... raise your tone a little. Don't have to yell like us, but just a little. Thanks, Ms Howe. Um, so you've been trying to lease it for six months unsuccessfully. Uh, what, what is the vacancy rate for office accommodation in Canberra? It is extremely high at the moment, um, and we did, uh, we have had meetings with a few different leasing agents just to try and understand yeah. the market. It is um, the vacancy rate is incredibly high. Yeah. Um, the top rated offices are a little lower than some of the um, older offices, but it is still uh, a significant issue in Canberra. Yeah, so you're, you're competing with a range of other yes. vacant offices. You've been trying to, to get this list done for six months. Uh, is there any po uh, positive signs that you'll be able to lease this in the near to medium term? Um, we are hopeful, I guess we just don't know. You don't you know. know. We, we don't have a crystal ball. All right, so what is, what is the cost of this vacant space to, the, uh, to, to your organisation? Uh, at the moment, we don't have a significant amount of open um, vacant space because but of when, our contractors. When, when, the, when the, it comes online? Um, it would probably be about uh, around 20%. Of the cost of the office, so that's about two hundred thousand, is it? If if it were a whole year vacant, yes. But it's six months vacant already, isn't well, it? Well, no, because we've been using our core system replacement staff have been in, in our the... office and using the space. All right, so they're going to move on, are they? When the project is completed, yes. Yeah. So then, then there's two hundred thousand dollars per annum, basically. Yes. yes. If of, we're unable of unused to space, public. with no sign that that is going to be uh, leased. You've got no signs that that can be leased now, have you? At this point, no, but we are optimistic right. that we will be able to sublease over the next well, year. Well, that's a hope, isn't it? Yes. You'll be getting to prayers soon. <laughs> Six months is a long time, right? OK, so th this is a cost, direct cost to the organisation with no si sign that that can be fixed. Was there any discussions with the minister's office about this exact issue prior to the Minister directing you that you should uh, take up this hub-and-spoke approach? Uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, Mr Thomas? Oh, we'd have to take that on notice, Senator. Surely you would remember if... Uh, uh, did you raise with the Minister? Did you raise with the Minister the cost of having these, this office space left lying vacant? I wasn't the Managing Director at the time, Senator. It doesn't matter whether you were, I'm talking about you as an organisation. Have you got any notes, any file notes that you have raised this with the Minister? I'd have to take it on notice, Senator. So, who's been, ha so, Ms Howitt, you've been handling this for how long? Thank you. Um, I've been with the organisation since August 2014. Yeah, so you were, so you've been handling this specific issue, are you aware? Elements of the issue, as yeah. I said earlier, I'm not uh, aware of um, discussions with OK, Mr Thomas, Thomas, if you can take on notice whether you actually did, uh, whether your organisation raised the co this issue of uh, vacant uh, office space being a dead weight in terms of a financial cost on the organisation as a result of, Senator, uh, of uh, Minister Joyce um, uh, making this decision. Uh. Certainly, Senator. We will look into whether those discussions were had. Any file notes between you and the Minister's office on these issues, uh, telephone calls, <laughs> any correspondence uh, on the issue would be welcomed. Um, has there been any, any complaints uh, to the organisation uh, in relation to the roadshows? Uh, Senator, I'm, a, I'm aware that there are um, some growers and some members of the public that uh, do not agree with the approach that was taken. Well, I'm sure that granny in grey stains would want to listen to something else other than your research. But anyway, um, 
she maybe wasn't one of them. Who's complained? Senator, I don't have that with me. I'd have to take it on notice. You, so you can't give me any idea? Some, you said some of the growers. You must know something about it. Uh, Senator, what I said was there was a range of people in the regional areas. That could include growers. It could include advisors. Um, has Minister Joyce expressed any concern? Uh, I'm not best placed to answer that. I'll ask uh, my executive manager of communications. So, so if there's a communication with the minister, that goes through your communications person, does it? Senator, it comes down to the fact that I'm an acting managing director at the moment. You're lucky. Uh, Senator Cameron, I'm happy to uh, take that. Any um, approach to anybody who was invited to speak as a guest on the panel was made by Fairfax uh, Radio, so not directly Correct. through us. Um, obviously, I have um, informed the Minister's office um, that yeah, we were doing these it. events yeah. over the course of conversations, um, and likewise had informed the Shadow Minister's office um, as part of the course. Mm. So you, you spoke, was there a specific fee to Alan Jones? A specific fee to Alan Jones? I will happily take that on notice. I have provided the costings from the first event. Uh, Alan has publicly said that he has done uh, the events uh, and he didn't accept a, a fee. But that's, I would have to take that on notice and ask Fairfax for, uh, for that. So does this, sound, does this sound right to you? $6,000 in travel costs, $5,000 in accommodation costs? This is the uh, these are the costs that Fairfax had provided to me, and they were the first, so they were obviously the reduced costs. Yeah. Um, $2,000 so food and year. beverage costs? Correct. That's for, the, that's for the whole event, though, not for Mr Jones, just to be clear. So the accommodation I wouldn't costs expect Alan Jones to be, well, $2,000, depends what the caviar costs, I'm not sure. But who knows? And what's the $1,166 incidental cost? Uh, I would have to take it on notice. I would assume <coughs> it cover things like printed materials, uh, projectors. No, I don't want an assumption. So I would take it on notice and provide it to you. OK, Senator. OK. Now, there was some concern that some of the... This is a long two question. Yeah, that, yeah I'm, I'll finish on this. The, the food forum uh, wasn't well attended. Is that that's, correct? That's because I wasn't invited. Uh, that's incorrect, Senator Cameron. I read that opinion piece um, in the Weekly Times, which, uh, which had suggested that. But in fact, um, the last sessions of the day, uh, to my mind, were very well attended. I was actually um, at the event. Um, I understand the opinion piece. Is this the Pratt thing? Wasn't there. Correct. All right. Minister, that does the uh, does does the minister support these roadshows and this expenditure of uh, public money? I'd have to take that on notice, Senator. Discussion with, uh, the Senator, uh, with Minister Joyce. So, um, has, uh, look, uh, before we go any further, I should declare an interest now because I've been uh, a guest speaker at the mm. Pratt Whatever Food Forum. Mm. Yeah. And I, I didn't get paid, Doug, and most of them got up and walked out when I started to talk. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? <laughs> yep. Um, so, uh, Senator Cameron, I'd, I'd also um, point out that um, your leader in the Senate spoke at this food forum, um, Senator Wong. Good. Yeah. Hmm. And I'm sure she, like everybody else, so has spoke. Was, was yeah, well, so I'm so just Doug pointing Cameron, out that it was. So uh, what? Mate, should oh. we press on, Doug? Well, so what to the question, no, the Senator Stirl? Yeah, but so I, I, what I to just, the question, like Senator Stirl? How, how much really more? Just wake up. What a no. fantastic contribution. Uh, excuse me, Chair. Chair, yeah, okay. can I point so a point, please? Oh, excuse I me. Withdraw, can I, I withdraw. withdraw. You know, I don't know why you're I so cranky apologize. today, Senator Stirl. Right now, he's withdrawn. Don't take the bait. I'm so sorry. Please forgive Don't take the bait, because this is... Developing into the schmozzle that it was always going to so, be. Yeah. Yeah. So, Miss yeah. Lord, you, you are. I'm trying to be respectful and shut up, unlike you. <laughs> That's more like it. So, so, so Miss Lord, you, you indicated. Why are you doing this today? I, I'm ready when they're finished. I apologise. Well, um, I tell an Irish joke. Or? So, no, please, please. could you provide details of the attendance so at the uh, food 
forums. Fantastic could, for all attendees? Yes, or, all attendees. And could you in, indicate you know, where they came, whether they were growers, uh, you know, what sort of classification of people they were in, in attendance, the numbers and the cost-benefit analysis that have been done. Has there been any cost-benefit analysis done in relation to this? Uh, so we're in the early stages because the event is obviously one part of that sponsorship um, and now a lot of the editorial content will come out. Um, from our perspective in terms of guests who attended, we invited uh, some key grower groups, some industry uh, representative organisations, other uh, research and development corporations. So we had a range of guests there as well. Uh, okay, so could you provide then also that, that detail I'm asking about who attended, what, what, who, who was there? And can you also provide the, uh, all the, all the uh, papers relating to the business case for the for for this uh, pro, this whole program, that's the food forums and the advertising. What what was done to uh, to develop the business case? Uh, should, can you provide the business case that said this Absolutely. is what you should do? Uh, so all correspondence, all file notes in relation to the business case. I Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Could I just for the to, for the sake of evenness point out that. Mr. Clark, who was in some way queried today, um, was actually appointed by Joel Fitzgibbon to the job, and so we might include, has he been to any Labor functions, because the Labor Party appointed him to the job. Uh, there you go. By the way, could you also take on notice uh, um, um, any details of costings around a um, recent legal conference in Hobart, which was put on by the Family Court, in which the uh, and, and the a banquet the night before, in which the entertainment put on by the Family Court and the Chief Justice of the Family Court was two professional women dressed in judicial robes who simulated sex. And at that function, the, uh, the Chief Justice of the High Court, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, got up and walked out with two other judges. It was a disgrace. You don't have to take that on notice. I'm just letting you know some of the shit that goes on. Oh, the uh, bloody chair, family. Chair, um, Disgrace. Um, I'm sure that's if, for no, I know, but it's for out there. Yeah. Um, chair, not that I'm going to respond to that. I wonder why we don't have a judicial commission, for God's sake. Uh, chair, would it um, we seek your indulgence to also put on the record the government's thanks to Professor Stellick for her role? Yeah, yeah, I was going to come to that. OK, well, on behalf of the government, um, I would like it recorded and thank you very much for the role that you've played and the contribution you've made to research and development over the time that you've been chairing. Just two very quick So be just before, yes, Professor, before you leave, Senator Gallagher has two questions which I... Well, it's basically to the Grahams. So. Yeah. But look, I, ISBT have got eight properties in Canberra. Which one are you in? Four national circuits. Four national circuits. So you have a 2,000 metre lease in four national circuits? We have a floor on the uh, eastern town. So you're paying $475 a million a year. It's 2,000 plus metres, 2,027 thereabouts. Uh, the actual, do you want a, a precise... No, well, it's, it's got to be in that figure, hasn't it? A it floor. has to be in that figure, yes. So you've got 50 permanent staff and you have 15 contractors. So you have 32 square metres per person, which is roughly double the, gen the most generous allowance in the public sector of about 12 to 14 metres per person. So your rent is twice what a normal public service department has. Do you accept that? Uh, Senator, I'd have to take it on notice to look at all the figures. Yeah. And you've told Senator Cameron that you have a 20% redundancy in that floor as we speak. Uh, what we've indicated is that at the end of a current core systems replacement, we will have 20% of the floor that will be available for us to sublease. So for all those levy payers out there doing their work in the field today, the department or the Grains Research Council looks after them, is renting space which is roughly double the most generous allocation in the public service and has a 20% redundancy in the million dollars a year rent that it pays. There you go. Oh, just a, a follow-up on that. Have any of the other agencies got vacant office accommodation as a result of uh, the, the Senate, uh, Minister Joyce's relocation? Um, on behalf of Rodek, no, Senator. FNC, no. OK, thanks. I'm finished. All right, so in white language, that's um, half an acre. Is that all right, Pat? Sure.
I, uh, Pat, I think we'd better get you to say something, seeing how you're fresh to the thing. How, how, what's your uh, perception of this committee and its opening? Uh, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> say uh, something on the record, Pat. I, I thought Senator Dodson was his usual diplomatic <laughs> self, <laughs> and uh, I don't think he's going to break that right now. Anyhow, welcome aboard, Pat. Thanks very much, Mr. President. Okay, I think, I think we quit while the going's good, eh? Who do we want next? Well, I think that I'm just following the programme. My God. I've got APMA, APDA. Portfolio agencies in here. And AFMA. Um, and we'll and kick off with who? So do Fisheries, pesticides. This one will be something we can get in a little bit early. Where are So, you, Rachel, you've got I've got what questions for APMA. Can you only be on this floor, mate, this top floor? I can't. So can I don't can do that. Or could be down in the main sure. committee room. Yeah, I'm not sure, mate. I want to go with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. In continuation, Senator Seward. Thank you.